Okay, next up, Venice Cold Brew. Chris Mueller is going to come up to the stage and talk about his cold brew coffee brand. Round of applause for Chris. All right, once again. Hello and thank you. My name is Chris Mueller. I am the founder and CEO at Venice Cold Brew. What I'd like to do is take my presentation from yesterday and just express the points a little bit fuller. My goal with Venice Cold Brew was to start a company that would allow me to play a strong role in my community. Currently, Los Angeles is experiencing a bit of a renaissance, both culturally and technologically, and I wanted to be a part of that. The inspiration for Venice, bam, is decidedly Southern California. It's the beach, it's the bright poppy colors, it's the sunshine, it's the abundance of outdoor activity and energy. The goal then was to create a healthy, uplifting beverage that sings to the essence of what it means to drink coffee in Southern California and then bottle that feeling. To do this, Venice created an entire production facility and processes to make some of the cleanest, smoothest cold brew available. We knew that this would make us disruptive. We knew that we needed to create a premium segment within the cold brew category and own it. Venice is started um, with self-distribution. We started by going into stores, shaking hands, making friendships, and building the bedrock of relationships that would make Venice what it is today. We've done all of this without outside capital. This has pushed us every day to make smart decisions, to act nimbly, to hire very smart. Um, premium, this is our thing. We have two current SKUs. We have black coffee and we have coffee with almond milk. This has both our signature ingredients, direct trade coffee, pure spring water. Both of these are low to zero calories, low to zero sugar. They're gluten-free, vegan, and non-GMO. The current excitement is our third SKU, sparkling cascara. Cascara is coffee cherry fruit, sun-dried, cold steep to perfection, and carbonated for a totally new coffee experience. Um, like our other two SKUs, it's low in calories, it's low in sugar, and it is intensely refreshing. Over the last year, we've developed strong retail partnerships with Whole Foods, Erwan, Gelson's, Lassen's, Smashbox, Farm Shop, Rainbow Acres, and Deus, among others. We've developed strong distribution partners with Joyride, High Touch, Unify, Dove, Quinn, and Seacoast. For Venice, the future is looking strong. 2017, we aim to refine the brand. That's our marketing, that's our packaging, that's our interactions with customers. We want to get out, we want to double down, we're going to educate. We have a premium, healthy, beautiful product. We know that all cold brews are not created equal and the customer needs to know that and we need to treat them to a delightful experience. We need to attract investment. We know we need smart minds, we need boots on the ground, and we need people that are gonna help us grow. 2017, the plan is to expand. Q1, we're going north. Q3, we're going east. And we wanna help bring the Venice vibe and a premium, healthy, refreshing cold brew to all. Thank you. Great stuff, Chris. Thank you, Ray. All right. Um, I asked this yesterday um, about you know, this really crowded and growing cold brew coffee category. Nicole, does Venice have what it takes to stand out? I think they do. I mean, I think that the branding is, it feels very craft. 
and handmade. Um, and I do think, you know, there's going to be some large national players and some strong regional players. And I think you have an ability to play in the latter. And I wouldn't go, you, when you mentioned going north and east within Q1 and Q3, I mean, I would just be careful to not go too broad too fast to really build up that, that name recognition here, um, which you're doing. And it sounds like you're doing it through multiple channels by using um, you know, distributors where you're getting on-premise too. Um, to really help build the brand with really places that are influencer um, locations here in Los Angeles. So I would really, really focus on that. But I think I think the product tastes great. I, I do like the packaging. I, I might stay consistent with that blue theme. I think it ties in the beach a little bit. Um, okay. And, but, and the cascara is great. Really interesting. I wonder Thank if you can you. make it taste a touch more coffee to okay. really bring that coffee taste out. I think it, it finishes with, with the fruit and starts to taste more like a soda and maybe try to make it taste a touch more of the coffee. Okay, absolutely. Kim, what do you think of Venice's uh, branding and marketing strategy as outlined by Chris? Yeah, I think it's um, almost the exact opposite of what we just saw with Immortal, right? I think uh, really clean, simple. I guess what I'm looking for in terms of the why Venice versus um, other cold brews currently in the um, category. As, as we mentioned, it's a very you know, highly competitive category. And so I think you've, you mentioned the word premium a number of times. And so we just want a little bit more of the story of the why. Why would I choose this versus some of the others? Um, I would echo uh, Nicole's point on the Cascara. There's something really interesting there. I'd never Never tasted it before, and it was—it's—it's it's it's like a—it has that impact for sure. Um, but wasn't getting as much as the um, the coffee notes, getting some more of the cherry on the back end of it. But it's a very interesting, um, complex kind of uh, flavor profile. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Following up on the cascara, I don't think you tried it yesterday, John. Did you, you tried it today? What do you think? Um, I like it, but I think it might be a hard sell just because it's so different. I mean, on the one hand, you've got you know two products that are like pretty damn easy to like understand needs no explanation really like I mean I think it's great there's like almost no words on the front of the bottle um, Cascara like I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right but I mean I think that is probably going to be a, a challenge so I'm not sure that that's the best strategy versus even you know carbonating coffee or making another flavor or something like that just honest feedback on it so thank you Ken I think that's a, a great point, and, and there's a potential disconnect here because of the sour note at the end or the carbonation, which is causing that sour note. Mm -hmm. And without having two skews there, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know what the real consumer feedback would be. So I would maybe um, either do two skews. You've got okay. one still, one carbonated. Got it. Greg, what do you think about that Southern California vibe as the point of differentiation? Well, I mean, I love that. I mean, I, the thing I, there are two things, I guess. One is I didn't know Southern California, particularly Venice was known for coffee. So that I think needs to be clarified. And then I keep thinking like people that are beyond Venice. So people in the middle of the country or in the Eastern part, South part of the country, how do they not know that's not Venice, Italy? Um, you know, so I think that, I think your, your base coffee is amazing, by the way. It really is phenomenal. It's art, artwork. I wish you paid up more about the, you know, what are you doing with the brew, the type of water, things like that. That bit of the story about how you're making it, just to give you more credibility that Venice actually is a place that can generate this fantastic coffee experience. And then on the brand design, like, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't scream Venice to me, California. Okay. Um, and I think you could work on that. But the bottle shape is nice. Thank you. Nice and clean. All right. Great stuff, Chris. Well done. <laughs>